today we are gonna do a little bit of strength work. Actually, not a little bit, that's the whole focus. However, when I say a little bit, that's because we're gonna be in and out of the gym within 60 minutes. So that's a good session. You don't always need to be at the gym for two or three hours. You don't always have to have that conditioning piece to feel like you got a really great workout and you improved upon stuff. So I've kind of got written down what I wanna do here. So I've got a little triceps, a little bit of pulling, and then some midline work. Um, starting out with a compound lift. So I'm gonna show you guys the dead stop Z press that I love that's also gonna take your handstand push-ups to a whole nother game uh, or to a whole nother level. So it's gonna be a good session. Let's get to it. So today we are doing a new strength exercise. Pressing for me continues to be a weakness. Um, I noticed it in my dumbbell squat snatch. It's not the legs, it's the arms, and then in my handstand walking, and also the parallel handstand push up. So today we are doing a dead stop Z press. So what that means, I took these arms and set them up so that way I can sit down on my butt. The bar should be right about like your eye level. So we're working from, we have to get engaged and then we're gonna press all the way up and then just back down to that eye level. So what that's gonna look like when I sit down, you can see it's just around my eye level. I'm gonna get set just like I would be pressing overhead. So my hands are about a thumbs width distance or just outside of my shoulders. Then I have to think about keeping my midline engaged because I can't cheat when in this seated there's no cheating happening in the seated position. So I wanna keep my ribs down, keep my midline engaged, nice and active in my lats and in my upper back. And then from there, I'm gonna think about driving straight up and then coming straight back down to a dead stop, reset my core, reset my breath, and then press again. So I'm doing three sets of eight up to a very heavy set of eight. I don't know if I can do this, I'm gonna try. Um, and just focusing on that good clean lockout, which is typically where I struggle in the handstand push up or in the overhead press. So when you see three by eight, you know it should be hard. And if it says build to a heavy eight for the day, like it should be heavy. So I actually am happy with the weight that I chose because I only got through seven reps and then I failed my eighth. So with this, like I'm still fatigued, my heart rate's still really high. So just take a second, let the bar come to static, reset your breath, and then try to finish out that last rep or last two reps or however many it is that you need. Um, if we're only getting through like two, maybe we went too heavy, but if we get through the five or six and it's just those last two that are struck, that are sticky, that's actually a really good thing. Then we're at the weight we should be at, we're in the range we should be at. We just wanna make sure, just come to a dead stop, shake it out, and then try to finish out that set of eight reps. So you saw, that's exactly what you saw happen with me, but I'm really happy with it. It felt exactly like being in a very deep deficit handstand push up for me is where I start to get the press, and then it's just I have a hard time finishing that lockout position. So for me, this felt like it mimicked that perfectly, so I will continue to do these and see if it can help me with my deficit handstand push-ups in my pressing. So if you don't have these long arms, uh, we just have one set here at the gym for dead stop front squats and things like that. Um, what you could do is you could set up the J cups. Um, you just have to be very careful on the way down because the J cup is only about two inches. So you'll just keep the bar nice and close to the rack and then very, very, very controlled on the way down. So you may not be able to, to go quite as heavy just because you have that smaller margin for error. Um, you could also probably use some jerk blocks if you can set them up to the right height, sit between the jerk box, pressing straight up and coming right down. Um, that might be a little bit harder just because of the plates resting on there. So you'd have to find the right level. So I'd probably err towards the J cups. On the comps and path to trying to build triceps, I'm always trying to figure out good ways to create hypertrophy in the triceps. So um, starting with a little bit of that strength range, I'm doing 15 reps of the barbell skull crusher. So I'm laying on my back, I'm locking my elbows, and I'm thinking about only moving. So once my elbow's locked into place, I'm only coming down towards my forehead and then extending. We don't wanna see a lot of movement in the whole arm. So we wanna get set, kind of go into that flexion and then extend. 
Um, so 15 reps there with the barbell and then I'm immediately setting it down and going right over to the bands. And when I come to the bands, so I just like to make sure my hands are set up evenly. So I'm going, I'm using one of our kids bars and going about thumbs width distance. And then again, same thing. So we pin our elbows down to our side, my midline's engaged, and then I'm pressing straight down, only coming back up to where my elbows are pinned. Okay, so I wanted to try to not cheat by using my chest, but make sure that I'm feeling it all through the back of my triceps. And I'm doing a max set. My goal is to get to 30 reps, and those should be quick. I have a problem with moving quick, but I'm trying to move quick. So if you're doing these at home, think about as quick as possible for these when you're pressing down with the barbell every single time. I'm resting about two minutes between 90 seconds. I get bored sometimes um, and doing four rounds. So really good burner for your triceps. So I'm doing some rope pull-ups, pretty much just working on my grip on the rope. So I tend to, I noticed, just lose my pull a little bit with my lats when I'm forced to grip the rope this way versus hanging on a pull-up bar. So I'm just jumping up to where my feet don't hit the ground, making sure I fully extend so my arms go all the way long, and then I'm pulling as deep as I can, ideally below my chin, right at my chest height. I'm doing five with my right arm on top, then I drop, then I switch and do five to six with my left arm on top. And I'm noticing my left hand on top is definitely a little bit weaker. So after this or throughout the week, I'll probably do some single arm banded pulls per side just to start working on my lats, make sure they're firing and they're activated the way they should be. After the rope pull-ups, I'm going right into forcing myself to pick up a heavy sandbag. So I'm using 125. And sometimes, honestly, what I notice is when I, after I've done a heavy pulling stimulus, picking up the bag can be the hardest part. Once I have it up, it's good. So then I'm doing about 120 feet carry, four rounds for quality, so not for time today. So easing back in. Um, this afternoon, I really just wanted to focus on my shoulder strength. So I feel like that is one workout shop where I'm the weakest between my legs and my shoulders and my midline, definitely my pressing. So I chose to do a compound lift. So I started with the dead stop Z press and I went heavy, so to failure. And then from there, I took it into some accessory movements where I was focusing on you know, more of the hypertrophy, so the larger sets and just really working on that smaller muscle group after I've already hit the strength movement. So I took it into the skull crushers and then the banded push downs for the triceps and I did four sets of big sets there. So I could really feel like my muscles were starting to get pumped and I could feel the blood in the muscles. And then from there I rested and I went into pulling. So I worked on push or pressing first and then I went into pulling as I was a little bit tired. And I worked on my rope pull-ups um, just to hopefully help with the rope climbs, help with the legless, and then into a sandbag carry. So I just noticed I really need to continue strengthening my posterior chain in many different ways. And one way to do that is gonna be to hold a sandbag and move up and back or even just holding it in place. Um, I'll finish with just some, you know, really light cardio, low impact, um, low heart rate, just flushing, continuing to get back into things. But it's okay to have a day where it's like, I didn't hit a Metcon this afternoon, a traditional style CrossFit workout, and that's okay because I need to work on strengthening certain muscle groups. And sometimes the only way to do that is to focus on that and not necessarily have that metabolic conditioning piece. I'll have plenty of those to come this week, but today was all about strengthening my shoulders and working on those smaller muscle groups. It was a good day. Make sure you check out the links in the bio, like, subscribe, stick with us, we've got a lot to come.